I suppose one of the things that people might spend their money on that uh, perhaps they shouldn't, I don't know. Chanel Number no. 5, there we are. Arguably the world's most famous perfume. Not something I make a use, lot of use of, I have to say, but um, still, it was good enough for Marilyn Monroe. Well, you know, they ask you questions like, you know, well, just an example, what do you wear to bed? Do you wear a pajama top, the bottoms of the pajamas are a nightgown? Or... So I say Chanel number no. 5. Because it's, it's the truth. <laughs> and yet I don't want to say nude, but it's, it's the truth. There we are. Marilyn only wore Chanel Number no. 5 in bed. Apparently that was from Chanel's own archives. But the iconic fragrance Chanel Number no. 5 that dates all the way back to 1920 is now under threat from trains. Chanel has been warning that a, high cha- a planned high-speed train line through the centre of France's perfume-making region could threaten production. The state-owned rail company says it's needed to ease congestion to plan this new railway, but Chanel says... It will have to stop supporting flower-growing activities in the Grasse area, which is now the Côte d'Azur. Elizabeth Musmano is president of the perfume industry group Fragrance Foundation in New York. First, I asked her, what is it exactly that makes Chanel Number no. 5 so special? It's the very first floral aldehydic fragrance. For the very first time, a perfumer didn't just go around and look for various elements in nature for instance, the rose flower, and used that piece of nature to make a fragrance, he mashed up different elements of nature to create a new note. So it would be as if Mozart wrote a symphony and we heard a chord that had never been played before, and that special chord transforms that symphony into a piece that is forever known as changing the course of how composers and the members of the audience think of and listen to music. And essentially it created an almost metallic tone, which doesn't sound very wonderful on the, on the surface, but when he mixed that with the floral sense of the day, it created a slightly edgier, if you will, fragrance that was really indicative of... Chanel's whole point of view and design directions. Let, let, let me ask what will be a ridiculous question. Um, is there a Chanel number no. four or Chanel number no. three? The perfumer that Coco Chanel hired brought a number of different scents for her to smell. And, you know, number one, she smelled. Number two, she smelled. Number three, by the time she, she liked number five the best. Um, I mean, let me put another question to you, which is you'll be aware of the controversy of this French high-speed railway they're trying to build through this area, and Chanel saying, well, we can't really get what we need for Chanel number no. 5 if this railway goes through. I yeah. suppose people will say, well, what is it? What sort of flower is it? What is it on the ground that they're so desperate for they can't get anywhere else? If they are needing those jasmine fields, what that would say to me as a consumer is, you know what, they're still a using real jasmine. That doesn't happen as much as it used to. A lot of the oil houses sold their farms and have been able to create the smell of rose, if you will, in a lab. Uh, There's a lot of chemical engineering and, and biology that goes behind the scenes for us to mimic the smell of a rose, for us to mimic the different smell of a Bulgarian rose or a rose grown in Spain versus a rose grown in Canada. But I suppose the the, the French consumer might say, well, that's all very well, but I've got to get a high-speed train. Does it really matter that you have to have these fields? No, neither one is wrong. And this is the nature of the human beast. We want to go places and get from point A to point B faster. And if I'm Chanel and those are my fields, obviously I want to save my fields. If they need to move and buy other fields, I guess out of the many houses, they are one that has the financial resources to do so. Would the world be a poorer place if Chanel Number no. 5 no longer was around? I think so. I do. And I don't mean to sound naive, and certainly, you know, there are things of greater importance. We need water. We need oxygen. We need food. We need a few clothes on our back. We need a house, you know, a roof over our heads. But there is a certain joy 
about any of the arts, if you will. You know, music soothes a savage beast. A wonderful fragrance, it just transports you. You know, if you've had a hard day at the office and your husband asks you to go out to dinner and you dab a little Chanel Number no. 5 on, all of a sudden you feel a little bit more special and elegant and therefore you act a little bit different. Elizabeth Musmano there of the uh, perfume industry group Fragrance Foundation, speaking to me from New York. So, Peter, um, are you a fan of Chanel Number no. 5? I don't know, you may wear it, I don't know, but would you be a fan if someone else wore it? Well, uh, there's one thing that I do know, Roger, is that uh, I've learned very early on in my life that if you wanted to succeed, Chanel Number no. 5 was a very good way of doing that. Yeah. And uh, I know that my, my wife um, uh, is a big fan of Chanel Number no. 5, as is my daughter. So oh. um, on, on the one hand, I'm thinking, what is happen- happening Are we at the end of civilization? If um, Is <laughs> Chanel Number no. 5 really under threat, or is this one of the biggest um, publicity stunts we've ever seen of people well... who become now become more aware of Chanel number no. five? I was wondering about that because just before Christmas, you know, it doesn't perhaps hurt for people to suddenly be aware of what they might uh, might want to be buying. What do you think? Well, Is who, it... well, well who, who knows? There could be a, a very big rush on uh, perfume departments at big department stores <laughs> to make sure that there's a, there's a stock up before civilization ends. Well, I'm, I can tell you'll be running down immediately to the nearest uh, big store in Brisbane and, uh, and getting your order because clearly you need it, as you say, in your life. But uh, it's nice to know and it does smell very nice. I, I can't tell all the notes or the metal or the Bulgarian rose, or heaven knows what. It is nice, however. Anyway, that's enough of perfumery, but thank you very much, Peter, for being with me here on Business Matters. Thanks to all of you for joining us, and uh, we're back on Monday. Bye-bye. There are many ways to keep up with the BBC World Service. Join us on social media or sign up for podcasts at BBC World Service.